Test one. Summarize spoken text. Page forty-six. One. Technological nature. You may have heard this term. It's a term used to describe a picture of a natural scene that's been produced using computer graphics, so that basically it isn't a real view, say of a garden or field. It's a virtual one. It's a picture that looks like a real scene. Now, looking at scenes of nature is known to have an effect on people's health and well-being. So, for someone who's ill, for a patient in a hospital. Does a virtual view of a garden have the same impact as a real one? Does it have the same beneficial effects when you look at it? Because that would be good. Well,、um, if you test this out, if you put a group of people in a room with a real view and another group of people in a room with a virtual view, an unreal view, you can see what happens when they get stressed. If you give both groups a task that is slightly stressful and increases their heart rate, and uh, uh, what you'll find is that the people who have the real garden scene outside their window to look at, their heart rate goes back to normal more quickly than those of the people in the other group who only have a virtual view to look at. So yes, there is a difference. People's recovery from stress is faster in the room with the real view. Two. In criminal trials, memories are basic, a critical feature of proceedings. Both sides of the legal team, prosecution and defense, are likely to rely to some extent on witnesses and on what they can recall of events that led up to, or indeed formed part of the criminal act. Now, it's been well established in various circles that memory can be unreliable, particularly if new information is introduced in cross-examination that hasn't been presented up until that point. New facts that witnesses were unaware of. A lot of research has been done to test the effects of this, and it can be very problematic. For example, if you show a group of subjects a video of a crime, then you get someone else to read them an account of the same crime, but adding in information, be it ideas or objects that weren't present on the video. What researchers have found is that when the subjects are asked to retell what they saw on the video, they too include a number of things that were never there. In other words, the introduction of new information in a court of law is very likely to skew or distort a witness's memory of the event. Test one, multiple choice. Choose multiple answers. Page forty-eight. One. Last week we looked at urban regeneration and some of the consequences of this. One of which was the relocation of people from urban to suburban areas to、um, to largely allow them a better standard of living, because housing is cheaper in the suburbs, so they have more disposable income. But they have to commute, and commuters need rapid transport to get them from A to B. So subway construction is well, it's booming in some parts of the world. It's clearly being seen as the answer to the type of migration that I've just mentioned. It often gets huge public support because, well, if a subway is going to help you have a better lifestyle, then what's there to argue about? Well, quite a lot, actually. For a start, in order to go ahead with a major project of this kind, you need to be absolutely sure that the ground, and more to the point, what lies beneath the ground, can support underground transport. And to address questions like that, engineers have to be really experienced, really knowledgeable about the local area, water levels, land formation, and so on. And those key issues are what I want to focus on today. Passengers don't think about construction. They trust other, better qualified people to do it for them, and governments have to choose these people very carefully. Two. 
too. In places where there's been serious community tensions, I mean, Brickenden's a good example of this, there were 250 reported incidents there in 2009, often to do with neighbours and arguments, but criminal activity too. Um, and the police will tell you that if you leave residents to sort things out for themselves, the number of incidents rises. It doesn't fall. So the local council realised that they had to do something. So they went round to people's houses and met them and their neighbours and talked to everyone and got a general idea of what the local concerns were. If there were extended families involved, they looked at those particular families more closely and all the relatives and got some of the family intervention services to talk to them. And there were some very positive results. I mean, you can pick out the hotspots, you know, the main areas for crime. But the hotspots don't tell you what causes the crime in the first place, and so don't address the issues. So this proactive, more direct approach by the council worked well. And this was followed up with other quite practical solutions like cleaning up the area, getting rid of debris in alleyways and just making the place somewhere more agreeable, more livable. Test 1. Fill in the blanks. Page 50. 1. Learning a language in the classroom is never easy, and quite frankly it's not the way that most people would choose to learn if they had other options. Having said that, there are plenty of reasons for keeping languages on the school curriculum. For one thing, a fair number of students go on to take jobs in business and commerce that require a basic knowledge of a second language. When you talk to young employees in top companies, it seems that they had a career plan from the start. They were motivated to find additional things to put on their CVs, and of course language is one of those added but significant extras. Two. The assignment that I'm going to set for the holiday period is one that we've given students for a number of years. It's quite practical and will allow you to get out and about. It's no good being shut up in your rooms all the time. It does have a written element too. Um, basically, it's our data gathering exercise and there are two choices with regard to how you collect the data. We'll go through those in a moment. I'm also going to give you a link to an internet site that is, well, it's critical that you review this before you do anything, as it provides a lot of guidance on data presentation, both in terms of how you plot it, its diagrammatic form, and also its description, which has to be clear. Test 1. Highlight correct summary. Page 52. 1. It's been reported recently that some business schools have decided to make changes to students' grades by increasing them by 10%. This means that a C grade automatically becomes a B and a B grade automatically becomes an A under the new grading system. And the change is retrospective, which means that it applies to all grades that have been achieved since the school's current grading system, uh, which was introduced in 2007, has been in place. Now, there are at least eight business schools who've changed their grading levels, and they decided to award their graduates higher grades so they would be more attractive in the highly competitive job market. However, changing grades like this has been criticized by the academic and business communities because many people think the grades have been falsely exaggerated and don't reflect the true ability of the student. In fact, many employers realize when a school has made adjustments to students' grades, and so there is no real benefit in doing this. Um, lifting the grades may even be damaging to the students, because employers may believe that the graduates were given the high grades when they didn't deserve them.
2. Urban development is the first thing I wanted to talk about here in Perth. Urban development is going on at a great pace, and the standard approach here in Western Australia is for suburban development to happen at the outer edges of the city. You have suburbs slowly spreading out into areas that are cleared, and this is eating into both areas of native bushland and land that used to be used for farming, for agricultural purposes. The debate here is that on one side, there's the idea that we need more housing. We have a housing shortage in Western Australia, and suburban expansion is essential. Suburban expansion on the edges of the city is cheaper and easier to do than building more homes within the city, even though it's recognised it creates lots of problems with infrastructure and so on. On the other side of the debate, people say that urban sprawl is destroying bush and consequently the natural wildlife that exists there, and that it's too easy for developers to ignore these facts. Test 1. Multiple choice. Choose single answer. Page 55. 1. So it seems that, well, despite the fact that more couples are childless and more people are working in the cities, the pull to the suburbs has continued. Over 50% of Americans, that's about 158 million, live in the suburbs now. While in 1990, that figure was around 48%. That's actually a difference of 40 million. Rural areas, on the other hand, have not seen the same pattern at all. Populations have declined over the past 20 years, and now only 16% of our nation lives there. Actually, the word malaria means bad air in Italian, and centuries ago, that's what people thought caused this very infectious disease. And who can blame them, really? Who can blame them for making that false connection? Who'd have thought that a tiny insect like a mosquito could cause so much sickness? Hmm, yes. Uh, more surprising, perhaps, is the fact that it's taken scientists so much time since then to come up with a cure. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's what we're going to talk about now, because it does seem that this is now becoming a real possibility. Test 1. Select missing word. Page 57. 1. As I mentioned last week, we're going to look today at fiction writing, writing stories, and in particular at authors who have a reputation for creating characters in their books who are known as unreliable narrators. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, originally in the 19th century, it tended to simply mean that as a reader, you just couldn't trust what the narrator of a story was telling you. This might have been because they were not giving you important information, or because they themselves, as a character in their own story, lack some kind of personal insight. In later works of literature, this unreliability was used by authors more deliberately, with the direct intention of making a story more complicated for a reader to understand, perhaps a crime novel or a thriller. Nowadays, there's a lot more humour in unreliable narration, and it's often used to make first-person characters enjoyable to read about. So, what all that tells us as a general starting point is that this type of narration... Two. When you first examine something under a microscope, say a leaf from a plant, you're amazed at how much detail there is, and it's detail that you simply cannot see without magnification. And what you can see with the naked eye becomes suddenly huge under the lens. How big everything looks is astonishing, but it's also amazingly intricate. 
Suddenly, it's as if another world has opened up in front of your eyes, and you think, hey, I hadn't realized that something so small, so tiny, could be so Test 1. Highlight incorrect words. Page 59. 1. It seems we now know more about outer space than we do about the Earth's core. This is because temperatures are so high at the center of the Earth that human beings have not been able to take a close look at it. However, new methods of analysis may soon change all that. The seismic waves created by earthquakes and volcanic eruptions penetrate the Earth's layers at different speeds. It is now hoped that by studying these waves, scientists will be able to make new discoveries and solve some of the mysteries of the internal structure of the Earth. Two. Many species of birds cover long distances during their seasonal migration to warmer climates, but how successful are they? And do birds that get lost on their route ever manage to find their way back? Much research has been conducted into how birds navigate, and the results show that age is a significant factor. Young birds usually just carry on if they lose their migratory path and thus fail to reach their destination, whereas older, more experienced birds will generally be able to find their original route and continue successfully on their journey. Test 1 Right from Dictation. Page 61. 1. You should draw your graph on a separate page. 2. Some young people find city life rather stressful. Three. Weather patterns have changed significantly over the past 200 years.